Hi! Welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast, episode 22, A Sparkling New Day! <laughs> I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai, and it is May 17th, 2012, and I think that's, that's the backstory. <coughs> yeah. Um, last week was not so great for me, but as you saw while I recorded, I had a better time of it, and I got lots of very positive emails and encouragement. Thank you guys so much. It really cheered me up a lot to have you guys in my corner backing me up, and specifically thank you another Foghorn for sending me a pattern. She gifted me the Gillis pattern by Stephen West, so that is definitely going to be up on the needles soon. Very, very soon. I, I love that pattern. I've been waiting for it. So, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> and just an update on me. I know I told you that work was awful. I have a new boss. And let's see, she's on week three. So, at the time I recorded, she was still new. It or, Well, I mean, she is still new. But I hadn't really gotten a sense of how she's going to be. She's awesome amazing, totally an advocate, totally a buffer for the next level of management. I am so thankful that she's there because we've been without a boss for probably, I say we, there's a team of seven of us, probably two, three months now and the one before. So she's going to be great and she reminds me of a little yippy dog like dancing on her hind legs just like she is so happy. <laughs> so, and I really don't think she'd mind me saying that about her. <laughs> so, um, let's jump into the episode for this week. Um, I want to do the drawings first off, get those off off the plate, just so I can get rid of all the technology around me. The iPod, the computer, the screen, it's like there's so much. So, let's do that first. So, first up, there was the Highland Handmade. Um, what is this? Sugar Maple Sock Yarn. And the thread got lots of posts. Thank you so much, everybody. Great book recommendations. I think Stephanie Plum was by far number one out there. Um, or maybe it's because I've read Stephanie Plum that I just, oh yeah, another one for Stephanie Plum, and I kept knocking him off. But great ideas. I added a lot of them to my Audible queue or wish list. So waiting list, whatever it's called, where you just like, yep, next time I have a credit, I'm going to buy that. So, really great. Um, <laughs> I actually started reading and finished Salem's Lot by Stephen King. I know, super uplifting. Come on, vampires. Um, I was, I, I like the book, right? And he, in the foreword, he makes a point of saying that he would consider it he would hope his mother would consider it good trash and I agree with that like it's very just fluffy you know not a lot of substance behind it not a lot of deeper I guess the priest angle has a bit of um, symbolism in there that I saw right so I just read it or listened to it as a like oh this is an interesting jaunt and I really 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 enjoyed it um, he loves Dracula one of my top 10 books so this is very it's like his interpretation of Dracula, and so set in the 70s, so it was very cool, very cool. I enjoyed it. I would um, not describe myself as a Stephen King fan. I was very afraid of Stephen King for a lot of years, you know, boogie boogie boogie, he's gonna bring out all the monsters from under your bed. And then I listened to the first book in the Dark Tower series. I might have talked about it before. I've read them all. If there's a new one out, I need to get it, but... Um, I read them all, and so that's like seven books, eight books? Seven, I think. I don't know, the last three went together in a blur because I just sped through them. But um, I think when you've read seven or eight books by an author, you become a fan, like whether you want to be or not. So that gave me the, like, oh, he writes so beautifully. I'll just try the Sam's Lot book. And yeah, it scared me a little bit, but it wasn't. It wasn't too much for me, so I would recommend that to you guys. <laughs> and when I finish that, um, my best friend has picked up the Game of Thrones series. I was halfway through the third book, got really mad, put it down. And so she had caught up, like, in a month. She read the first two 
and then was to the point where I'm at and she's like you gotta pick it back up come on come on come on so I have and now I'm totally into storm of swords is the name of that one and I'm almost done with that so um, lots of good recommendations from you guys lots of like I love fantasy um, Tolkien type books you know those are my cup of tea so uh, storm of swords has been a good good diversion so anyways all this talking there that was my book recommendation I wanted to get my two cents in too so if I go to random.org and we had let me just double check here taking myself out we had 87 so I'm gonna say generate from two oh you're not gonna be able to see it to 87 I'm doing it on the computer. Generate. Okay. Well, I can flip it around. I don't know if you can see that, if that's even worth the effort, but I try for you. Number 11 is the winner. And that, I mean, I don't know. I'm sorry. Thanks for giving me an extra week on that or an extra bit of time. I needed it. So, anyway, so number 11 will be getting the Highland Handmaid's Agar. Um, colorway. Number 11 is Witsnitz. That is Whitney from Georgia. So Whitney from Georgia, this one's for you. She said, oh god, the Sophie Kinsella books are funny, light, and an easy read. She wrote the Shopaholic series plus a few others, and I have enjoyed them all. I've heard of the Shopaholic. I have some friends that really, really liked the, that series as well. So Whitney, Drop me a PM over on Ravelry, and I'll get this in the mail to you. So, congratulations. Um, also, this time around, we're going to do the birthday drawing for the month of May. So, um, for our members, we have 29 people with May birthdays. And it is the 17th today, so more than likely the day this gets posted, it will be Little Mermaid's birthday. So happy birthday to you, my dear. <laughs> um, I'm going to do a prize drawing for this skein of Hiawassee Creek Dye Works. It is the Blue Hibiscus Merino Sock. I got this as part of the, the um, yarn club that I'm in right now. And it's just not my color, but it is a beautiful shade of teal. I know, right? Teal is totally my color. It's a semi-solid skein, and I would say this will make a beautiful shawl. So, um, I think there's more written under the tag. I'm not sure how many yards it is or what the details are on it, but it is a merino sock yarn, and it's very smushy. Really nice. So, all right, so there are 29... May birthday, so let's hop back over to random.org, put in 1 to 29, <gasps> number 27, and if I hop back to the members with birthdays, where is that? Number 27 is Mama Must Knit. Happy birthday, Mama Must Knit. Hind is her name, I'm going to assume. <laughs> And her birthday was May 8th. Yay! Happy birthday! So, send me a PM and I will drop this beautiful baby in the mail to you. And as far as membership, we are up to four, no, 540 something, if I'm remembering right. 545 members. So, five more members and we'll have another prize drawing for the membership. Just everybody who's a member. So if you have five friends, invite them to join. They will also enjoy the podcast. <laughs> and we can do another prize drawing. So that is it for the prize portion of our show. Um, I will, let's see. Do you see the little things over there? You focus on those, the, the little blue and the pink. Right, I'm back. back. Um, one last thing for prize drawings. This past week, I, as you know, I have been um, 
listening to my books and I've been playing Words with Friends and Draw Something. At first I was addicted to Draw Something and then I got going on Words with Friends and I can do that one-handed while I'm feeding Roland or doing something else. Like it doesn't require as much as the drawing does so that's a little more usable for me. And the other thing I've been doing is I've I watched all of season one of Portlandia which if you like that kind of dry witty humor um, I'd really recommend it. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. But so that's what I what's been keeping me busy these last few weeks. I would like to know for this week's prize drawing what's been keeping you busy besides knitting. That's fun. Don't tell me that you do laundry and dishes. That's so fun. I want to know what you've been doing for fun besides knitting. So, you know, visiting, eating, movies, whatever. Just just share what you've been doing for fun. And the prize will be a skein and a half. I thought there were two. I might, I have to go dig again. There might be two and a half skeins of the City Tweeds Heavyweight in the color Blue Blood by uh, Knit Picks. I used this yarn to knit, um, no, head lace across the shoulders and up the neck. It's a Romy, Romy Hill, Romy? Rosemary Hill design. Oh, it was an interweave. Lefi. L-E-F-I-Y-E. I'll link it in the show notes anyways. I used it to knit that beautiful sweater. Uh, really love knitting with this yarn. It is a 55% merino, 25% super fine alpaca, 20% Donegal tweed. 164 yards. So I'm going to guess this is about 200 in my hand that I'm holding. And it is a heavyweight worsted. I would call this a chunky or bulky. Oh, they say... US 7s or 9s. I think I went with 9s, but anyways, really pretty tweedy yarn. Really liked working with it, and that could be yours. So, end of the prize drawing, and we will draw on the next episode. All right, <clears throat> enough, 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 enough. Now, on to the good stuff, the knitting. So, on to the good stuff, I'm running away. Um, last time I saw you, I spoke about Irving the Icebox Monster. It's a Rebecca Danger design, and these are my two little guys. So this is Irvin. No, this is not Irvin. This is Ivan. That's what I named him as I was knitting him. And this is Ur Uma. God, can I... Bleh, too many vowel sounds. <laughs> Alright, Ivan and Uma. <laughs> so, um, their mouths are cut out. I'm not going to go get them. They're the, I did, I copied the mouth off of the Chatterbox Monster. The, uh, Chelsea the Chatterbox Monster. So it's like a mouth instead of the monster mouth. And these little guys are for Roland, of course. So there you go. Those are my FOs this week. I haven't done a lot of knitting, to be honest with you. So, and it's, all this seaming is so fiddly. So really, this is knit as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces to get this little guy. So a lot of casting on, finishing, counting your stitches. But really fun. I think I'm going to take a little monster hiatus now that these these two are done. They're like the little angel and devil on my shoulder. Aww. <laughs> oh, my devil is looking at me. Look at you, devil. So... <laughs> I think if I had like pins, I could pin them there and for the, that would be hilarious for the rest of the show if I just had them on my shoulders. Anyways, so those are done. Um, what's next? The Age of Brass and Steam. You know, I finished that. I blocked it. I gave it to my mom for Mother's Day. It's beautiful. I absolutely love the drape on that. So that was um, Dreaming Color smushy with cas cashmere whatever the fingering weight version I think it's smushy with cashmere um and it, it just like whoo, butter it just flowed it was gorgeous so anyways I'll post some finished pictures of her wearing it soon but um and the, once that was done blocking off my needles whatever I've picked back up the maluka so that's what the finished I'm not giving anything away yeah that's what the finished pattern looks like. I am moving slower than death on this. So I looked at my project page the other day and it's been a month. And in a month, that's how much I've done. 
So it's, you do the edging first and it's a 33 point repeat, right? You do 33 of the points and I've done 12. So I am just, oh, that's the front side. Flying right along here, right? 12 in a month. I, I, I just have to make myself sit down and do it. And it's getting easier. Like I'm memorizing the pattern. So that's good because when you have to sit there and look at every row, it's quite annoying. The yarn is Alicia Goes Around Panoply of Peacocks, I think is the name of it. And it's the Deciduous colorway. It's beautiful green. And that's for me. This shawl is all mine. I'm not sharing it with anybody. Way too much work in this uh, lace edging. So that's on the needles. Going slow. Also on the needles is my serrated. And I'm sorry, I am in the middle of a row because that's how it worked. And when Roland went down for his nap, I said, quick, hit the hit the record button. <laughs> so I didn't even finish the row I was on. So um, this is Madeline Tosh Merino Light and the color Thicket. It is beautiful. I really like the pattern so far. Um, actually, I think my cable is long enough. No, it's not going to let me do that. But it's good sized so far. Here, here we'll do the finger, the finger stretch. It doesn't really contrast with my shirt very well, but you can see it. You get a good sense of it. I am on to the edge chart, and there are 19 rows in the edge chart, and I am on row four. So um, I have today off, tomorrow off, and then it's the weekend. So I should have, and we're going to my parents' house, so hands-free. Maybe I'll have this off the needles by next week. That is my hope. So... That is it. That is what I've got to show you that is currently going on. That's what i got going on. Um, I can tell you what I'm thinking about doing next. So, let me just rustle some papers. Because that sounds wonderful in your ears. I talked about another foghorn gifting me the Gillis pattern. Let's see. Can I show you? Yeah. That's just black and white picture of what it looks like. Um, it's definitely not a mindless knit. I think the pattern itself prints out to, oh, I guess it's just three pages. But it's, you know, instructions for a lot of the rows. So there aren't a lot of rest rows, I think, at my first glance. So here are the yarns I'm thinking about. Um, it's not a super exciting like lots to going on in the pattern in terms of lace like like for the serrated I knew that there was a lot of lace holes <laughs> I didn't want to use a variegated yarn that would detract from the holes and then you'd miss the lace details of what was going on in it and this has a very similar it's not similar in any way except for the fact that there are yarn overs so hence lace but um I don't think a variegated yarn would work very well with that. So here are what I'm thinking oh, wow. about using. Um, first, well, first I was thinking this is the second skein of the Dreaming Color Smushy that I bought, Smushy with Cashmere. So this one is a uh, teal, sky blue, gray color, right? It's very lightly variegated. I really like it. I think it would be nice near my skin, near my face. Um, the other one I'm thinking about is the Casbah. Who makes Casbah? I don't know. You must know. In the color pewter. Who makes Casbah? Handmade. Oh, I've never used Casbah before. And so this one is um, this gorgeous. Has a little. It has so many tones peeking out. It's like a little rainbow, but it's almost like it's over dyed with gray. So the when you look at it, you see gray, but then when you look closer, you see a little bit of lime and a little bit of pink. It's beautiful. So that one I like as well. And perhaps I'm talking myself into things. <laughs> um, third, I was thinking about the Fibrophilia yarn that I really like. I think this is called Envy. Yeah, Envy. And this just gorgeously, what color is that? Asparagus. I don't know. It's this beautiful green. 
but it's a pretty flat color if there isn't a lot of variation in that I would definitely call this um, semi-solid whereas the others probably kettle dyed whereas the others have color variation oh I hear the Roland making some noises and then wheel speed <laughs> and then fourth I was thinking about Schaefer Nicole which used to be my favorite yarn but that's a little too variegated right, I gotta I'll go. have a little musical accompaniment here for the end of it I don't know if you can hear it but his uh, little mobile is cranked up and so that's playing so let me speed through the end of this so Schaefer Nicole this is a beautiful cherry red and lavender just plum lavender I love this yarn but it is um, it's, it will make for a heavier shawl and I think it's too variegated so that one is not for this shawl pattern that I'm thinking about and then lastly I just double checked in the stash and I have this skein of Pagewood Farms Chuggy Chuggyike Chuggyike <laughs> I don't know. It's the color Meadow. This is a superwash yarn. Really highly twisted. Again, very variegated. So probably not a good choice for this either. But maybe for the boneyard, which I was also thinking about knitting. So I think in the end it comes down to these two that I'm going to pick between for the guy Gillis. So anyways, all right, that's what's sort of percolating. And then the other thing that I'm thinking about knitting that I just wanted to share with y'all is the uh, scrap cat scrap cardigan by Tracy Hudson it's called the best of the worsted black and white I know but basically um, the premise it's a top-down cardigan and you take a skein she suggests using a skein of Noro Korean and then you mix in your stripes of your scrap yarn that also goes same color palette and you burn it up on this and all of the finished projects look amazing so I'm thinking I want to do that too I want one too and I just pulled out my worsted bin and okay worsted with a little DK on top and this is this bin is specifically for baby stuff for me so it's 100% superwash yarn so I think this yarn will be my base um, this is I got this at Rhinebeck a couple years back, hand dyed super washed wool in the color, oh right there, Steam Valley Fiber is who it's by and it's 275 yards so I think that's enough to be my base color and then if I mix in some other, no, some other colors I also have a couple skeins of this Barocco Jasper which is a, a self striping yarn that I could use, I love teal of course so maybe those two together, this is leftover someone sent me from one of the uh, from the sideways cable sweater that she knit for Roland. There's another skein of the Jasper, the teal, and then this is the other main color that I'm thinking about. This is Lorna Lace's Zombie Barbecue, I believe. Yes, I know. What is this? Stocking at Zombies? No, I had this way before that. <laughs> I actually picked this up at Ryan back one year, thinking. Well, I picked it up before we got pregnant, thinking that I would knit a baby sweater. This would be a good baby sweater. And I've also looked at it for a tulip cardigan, but I like the, the messy aspect of this pro pattern. Um, oh, another skein of the Jasper. That's, that's the black. This is... Who is this? I can't read the label. I want to say... Oh, this is Colinette. Um another yarn that I absolutely love with the red and the green I don't know if I'll go with that these are all worsted weight this one I picked up at a local farmers market no idea what it is um what else could it be we could do this red this tomato red that's um shibui got that china red I think is the name of that color we've done a, I've done a baby hat this is cascade something paints hand paints I don't know I love this color, but definitely not the main color for Roland. Other color I could base it off of is the orange. So this is Malabrigo Rios in glazed carrots because he looks really good in orange. Like, I just can't, I can't, you can't go wrong with that. So maybe I'm looking at these three together with some others, with some other bits and bobs. We'll see, but that's what I'm thinking. So I just thought it might be fun to... To share that with y'all. Oh, and here's 
I have quite a bit of this too. Swish worsted, tied pool leather. So could be that color too. So, and it's knit on size eight. I don't think I can knit worsted on size eight. I think I need to go down to a seven for me personally. Um, Cause I don't want big gaping loose holy fabric. I'd rather have a tighter gauge sweater for him. That'll keep him nice and toasty. So that's next on my horizon. Um, what else did I have to tell you? I've said my thank yous. I've talked about books. I've talked about what I'm reading. Oh, the other thing that's here, since we've gone through this together and you've given me some ideas <laughs> what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put back the ones I'm not so wild about here. At the, more at the bottom. Oh, this is the leftovers from my watershed. That might be fun to use for him. Anyways, um, the other thing is we are now to the point of the final countdown. Final countdown for what? Well, SSK is a month away. Oh my god, I'm going to be leaving my baby for five nights, four nights, I don't know, Wednesday to Saturday. Several nights. I've never left him alone. So this should be interesting. Steve has, has traveled quite a bit. He's actually traveling right now. Um, so I'm used to being solo parent, so it'll be different for him to be solo. But uh, yeah. So it's coming and I'm excited and we just found out the classes we got into. So I am in Kristen Kapoor's color work class because, you know, you saw my movie, The Love Bought Heart. You saw my snail on Roland's orange vest, the Cooper vest that took me forever to finish. Like, I need some help. I need some direction on how to do nice, nice um, intarsia. Intarsia? When it's in one spot versus stranding. I'm good with stranding. That's fine. I have nice tension for that. But, so I have her class. I have blocking lace with Karen. I have uh, backwards knitting with Leslie. I am stoked. That's like, that's the one I wanted the most because purling is everyone's least favorite thing. And if it's not, go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. But <laughs> I'm not wild about purling. And so if I could just knit back, that'd be awesome. And then with Laura, I have beginnings and ends. So hopefully I'll learn some cast on, cast off, a little more variety. I'm pretty sure I'll still do my long tail cast on because once I, I didn't know how to do that for probably the first five years I was knitting. I had four or five different cast ons that I used. And then once I figured out how to do long tail cast on, I taught myself. Actually, I think magic looping made me learn. Like once I had that done, see I'm doing it. <laughs> Once I had that down, it was like, oh, well, then do the long tail. And then I had long tail. I knew how to use it. And then I forgot all the others. I exclusively used long tail cast. So, oh, well, that's me. So SSK is coming. I'm going to Tennessee, New Hampshire to Tennessee in June, end of June. It'll probably be pretty warm, huh? Yeah, yeah. Bringing my sleep mask. That's like the most important thing because since he's been born, obviously, I have not slept in unless he slept in, so we'll see how I do. But that's coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, leave a comment on the thread open for the prize drawing if you're interested in that nitpicks yarn. One more update. I was just thinking I didn't write this down, but I do want to share because some people had asked me because I know I talked about it before. Uh, we did get Roland enrolled in daycare. And he is going to go Tuesdays and Thursdays. So he spends two days with Steve, two, day, uh, two days with me on the weekend, and then a day with my mom, and then two days in daycare. So um, we'll see how that goes. I could be like, ah, next time you talk to me. But I have a feeling he's just going to love it. He is so happy whenever he's with, like, I mean, he's happy in the house, but when he's exposed to new people, oh my God, it's like, he flipped a switch. Maybe that's how all kids are, but he just lights up and is like, <gasps> I'm just a little nervous about the napping because they are all in one big room. I love the teachers. Totally our type of people. Crazy. And, um, but the kids are all in one room, so they play in one area and eat in another and sleep in a third. And he, right now, he sleeps. Oh, my eye is twitching. Can you see that? Ah! Okay. He sleeps in his bedroom with room darkening shades and a noise machine. Like, 
is silent during nap time and bedtime. So, and at my mother's house, it's not quite as dark as our room, but she has the exact same noise machine. <laughs> so, yeah. So we'll see how he does. I'm sure he'll be fine, right? Kids are resilient. They bounce back. They, pfft, whatever. He'll just sleep later. Go to bed early. Do what needs to do. But anyways, so leave a comment if you're interested in the yarn. Um, chat on the group. Bring some friends over. You know, and knit one of these best cardigan, best or worsted cardigans with me because I think that's such a cute name. Do whatever you'd like. Oh, and by the way, Melody, yeah, you totally kicked my butt on this. Yeah, she and I both were working on the Maluka, and um, hers is blocking, and I've got 12 points done. Oh. <laughs> I will persevere. I will. Even if it takes me four months, I will finish it. So, you finish your knitting, too, and have a great, great mid-May. Enjoy the sunshine, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.